Hey guys, I decided to do a quickie this morning because I got a gun in that we've, we've already talked about. I don't have to do a lot of development about this gun because if you're a regular subscriber, you already saw the video about what happened when the GIs took over the Walther factory in April of 1945. If you haven't seen that, you need to click here and uh, watch that video first because that sets up this gun. So we did that video and uh, just yesterday this gun came in uh, after the video has been posted for a while and it, it was picked up in the factory by a GI at the end of the war. And here's how I know. Obviously the first thing that stands out is it has, uh, most of it has no finish. There's no logo at all. Uh, there are some small parts that are blued. So it was put together with parts and just as an added bonus you'll notice no proof marks. If you look at any standard Walther PP or PPK, you know that there are proof marks on the ejector port and the slide. There's also one on uh, the end of the barrel that gets no respect because nobody ever knows it's there, but there is one there. This gun has no proof marks, so it was never issued. Also, you'll see no serial number, where it should be here on the frame, but it did have a serial number on the slide. The serial number on the slide, by the way, corresponds with some of the last, uh, the highest number serial numbers uh, recorded. So, very end of the war, this was a, a slide in the factory, a frame that was unissued, uh, a GI put it together from leftover parts. So, some interesting pieces on that, this. Uh, first of all, very common, this has the early weighted grips. If you know anything about production, they only did uh, weighted grips early pre-war, and then they went to the hollow all plastic grip. These are weighted by a metal insert in there. They went to a hollow, unweighted grip uh, during the wartime period, just to, uh, probably to save expenses. Uh, but this has early weighted grips. It has blued small parts. You can see the rear sight, the hammer, the trigger, the trigger guard. And the ejector, you'll see fire blue. Now that didn't happen until pre-war. They later just went to a straight bluing process. But pre-war, they did a fire blue ejector and a fire blue uh, safety lever, and you can see that on an early gun. This gun has some early parts, it has some unnumbered parts, it has some numbered parts, and the magazine is just a straight finger extension uh, wartime magazine, so you can check that out. So, this was definitely put together by a GI or a Polish uh, uh, forced laborer, um, one of the two, because uh, they were putting them together as souvenirs for GIs before they got the opportunity to go back home. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you tell uh, family and friends about us and make sure you like and subscribe to see more great stuff like this. If you're like me and you can't get enough of this stuff, click here to subscribe. That way we'll send you notification when we do something new or click one of these buttons for recommended videos.